All right, everybody, welcome back to another video. Today, we're gonna to talk about five different traps or pitfalls in home brewing that you wanna try and avoid. Hey everybody, if it's your first time here, I just wanna say welcome and thanks for checking out the channel. Here on this channel, I'll typically either do a grain to glass home brewing video or I'll do a shorter video on various home brewing topics like the one you're watching right now. If you like either of those things, please go ahead, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button as well so you get to see more content like this. And thank you once again for checking it out. So we're gonna talk here about five different pitfalls or traps to avoid in home brewing. And I think these are things that are applicable not only to new brewers, but also to experienced brewers. Several of these traps I have fallen into myself. So hopefully by watching those videos, you can avoid making some of those mistakes yourself. The first trap to avoid is overcomplicating your recipes and going absolutely nuts, adding in a whole bunch of different flavors. My favorite example for this sort of thing is just an outrageous pastry stout. So if you wanna make yourself something like, a, I don't know, a chocolate peanut butter cinnamon raisin stout that has a whole bunch of different flavors in it and you just wanna add a whole bunch of stuff to make it taste like some crazy candy bar, um, that's a great, awesome thing to do. The best thing about home brewing is being able to make the beer that you, yourself, wanna make and drink at the end of the day. And that's great. However, sometimes what we envision in our heads isn't really what's going to happen in reality. And these overcomplicated beers are a great example of that. This is actually a trap that I have fallen into personally myself. And I'm gonna link a video right here in the corner where you can see me do it in real time on this channel. I took a perfectly good Russian Imperial Stout and I decided that I wanted to add a whole bunch of different adjuncts and ingredients to it in secondary to create more interesting and better flavors. Um, this was probably one of the best, if not the best Russian Imperial Stout I'd ever made. I'd waited patiently for six months for this thing to mature out and it tasted amazing. And then I took four gallons of the six gallon batch and I added a whole bunch of different stuff to it. And about two of those ended up being remotely drinkable. This was a huge mistake on my part. That being said, if I had decided that I wanted to take that recipe and then add a whole bunch of stuff to it, all in bulk, I probably would not have succeeded and I probably would have dumped the entire batch. It's very easy to fall into this trap simply because it plays to our ideas that we're better brewers than we probably are. So you have your beer, which is like a system in the engineering point of view. And the more things you add into your beer that give it extra layers of complexity or extra steps in the process or extra ingredients in general, that's like adding extra variables to the system. The more things you add, the more things can and probably will go wrong. That is the unfortunate reality of overcomplicating recipes. Now, that being said, there are many people out there who brew extra complicated beers and they do them well. But the reason why is because they failed before. They have gone through the process and painstakingly brewed and rebrewed and rebrewed and rebrewed that beer over and over again, each time changing one individual variable so that they understand how it affects the overall end product that they have in their mind. And that is really the best way that you can go about doing something like that and creating your world's most complicated pastry stout. Pitfall number two is believing that more expensive equipment is going to make you better beer. And that is something that is just simply not true. The brewer is what makes better beer, not the equipment. The equipment is really going to give you a little bit more convenience, uh, practical usefulness, maybe a little bit more longevity. It might be more robust uh, versus, you know, infections or sanitation or issues like that it might be easier to clean. But at the end of the day, it's not going to just generate you better beer. Ultimately, you, the brewer, have to know how to leverage the strengths of this more expensive equipment. And oftentimes, it's not necessarily worth it. An experienced and talented brewer will still be able to make far better beer using, I don't know, brewing a bag in a plastic bucket for fermentation than a not so experienced brewer who's working with a turnkey brewing system and a $1,500 conical fermenter. Homebrewing equipment manufacturing has actually become a pretty lucrative market for manufacturing companies. And uh, that's mainly because of the high grade stainless steel that you have to use in high end equipment. And a lot of the fine and tight tolerances that are required in a lot of the equipment as well. And a lot of that is good. Stainless steel ultimately does make brewing a lot easier. However, a lot of the time, I think that these companies end up playing to home brewers who want to pretend that they're professional brewers on a tiny scale and have the exact same miniature version of what is going on at the microbrewery down the street from them. And that's all well and good. That's a lot of fun. If you got the budget for it and you know what you're doing, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. 
However, what is a problem is when you believe that if you get that equipment, it's going to just magically make your beer better. This is coming from somebody who owns and regularly uses a high-end fermenter. But guess what? I also own and regularly use mid-grade and low-grade equipment as well. And that goes right back to what I said about leveraging the strengths of the equipment that you're working with. And once you're kind of on that path, then that equipment can really enable you to make better beer. All right, so point number three is kind of tied in with point number two a little bit here, but that is jumping on the bandwagon for the latest trendy things and expecting them to be game changers. So this could be things like the latest piece of equipment. This could be things like the newest and coolest beer style, like, I don't know, cold IPA. <coughs> IPL. Using the world's trendiest new hop, which is probably also going to be the world's most expensive new hop, simply because of supply and demand, and then being disappointed by it. And more often than not, we're playing with these new things kind of at the expense of our budget, and we're let down a little bit. I'm very much guilty of jumping on the equipment bandwagon. Unless you're trying to be the very first person to talk publicly about a new trendy thing, it's really best just to kind of wait and see what happens when the dust settles. What do people actually think about these things, about whether it's equipment or ingredients or, or styles of brewing? Are they gonna last? Are they gonna stick around? Or is it just gonna be forgotten about in a few months and it's on to the next thing? I think it's always well worth it to see what sticks around and examining why it sticks around and then making your decisions from there. Number four is going to probably rub some people the wrong way, and I'm sorry about that in advance, um, but I think this is actually really important, and I'm not the only person out here to be saying stuff like this. And the pitfall is refusing to let go of conventional knowledge. So the craft beer movement and home brewing that's many decades old at this point. The knowledge that we have now, because of how many people have started to get into home brewing and how many people have gotten into craft beer, and, and the sheer amount of brain power that has gone into figuring out just how beer works, uh, has completely changed what we know about how to make it. And that applies to the professional scale as well as the homebrew scale. Oh, you need a 90 minute boil to get rid of DMS. Or, oh, high IBU count always means a very bitter beer and unpleasant beer. Or, oh, the basic crystal 20, 40, 60, 80 malts are the only way to add color and sweetness to your beer and somehow appear in every recipe written before 2012. The only way to ferment a lager is at 45 to 50 degrees and you must lager it at freezing temperatures for a minimum of eight weeks. It is physically impossible to make a good beer in a week or less. <laughs> The list goes on. This is all conventional knowledge, and in some cases, this is true. However, a lot of things are coming up nowadays that are challenging that. Oftentimes, you see this conventional brewing knowledge just being parroted back and forth between people that aren't actually really challenging it. And when it comes down to it, a lot of that stuff has just been passed on and on and on without people actually thinking about it and sitting down saying, does that really happen? Or is that really necessary? So I just encourage you when you're researching how to make your next beer or you're doing some thought about it and you go in and you find some old forum posts from like, I don't know, 2008 and it says to do things like I mentioned earlier, you're probably going to want to sit back and say, does that apply to me? Does it apply to the beer that I'm making? And is that still something that people actively agree on nowadays? It is the second half of 2021, and now we have different ingredients, we have different processes, we have different knowledge, and a lot has changed. And it's something to keep in mind, is that when you have some of that old knowledge, some of it is good, and it all comes from a good place. You must always take that knowledge in context with the times and what was understood about brewing at the time. If we're hesitant to let go of conventional knowledge, and we don't want to have our current understanding of the brewing situation challenged, I mean, ultimately we are just making beer for ourselves, that's fine, but it's not going to help you advance with the times. The last pitfall to avoid is snobbery. Bottom line up front, brewing snobs are just plain annoying. Please don't be one. Going back to point number four, a lot of people out there really do believe that they know everything there is to know about brewing and that the understanding that they have and the methods that they follow are the way, the only way, and that there is no other way. Listen, there's many different ways to get something done, and when it comes to brewing beer, there's even more ways of getting something done. The process exists for a reason, and there's a generally wide left and right limit that's associated with each step in the process. You don't necessarily need two decimal point precision on every single thing that you do in the brewing process in order to be successful. 
if you want to be that analytical and if you want to be that involved in your brewing process, more power to you, but do not impose that on other people when they are just trying to learn. If I put myself into perspective of somebody who's never brewed a beer before and is coming to, I don't know, the comment section of a homebrewing YouTube channel to try and figure out how to do it and sees a whole bunch of comments saying, no, this is the wrong way to do it. This is the way you should do it. And, oh, no, that's actually wrong. You should do it this way. And, oh, no, you're both wrong. We should also do this thing. But this is actually the way that it was done historically, so therefore we need to follow that practice. Honestly, if I was in that person's shoes, I'd probably just quit before I started. It's not worth it. It looks too complicated. There's a million ways it looks like this could go wrong. I guess it's probably just not for me. And that is how we end up having people that don't want to start homebrewing. I think a lot of people end up getting scared away from this hobby by people who are acting like snobs. But if you are somebody who's trying to start homebrewing and you happen to be lost in all the discord, take it straight from me. It's not complicated. Everything is simple and there's a lot of different ways you can do something to make beer for yourself. And it's an extremely rewarding hobby and is a lot of fun at the end of the day. So once again, there's no reason why we have to be snobs about it. So please don't be a snob. And if you're a proud homebrewing snob who does not like to have their views challenged, please Go ahead, hit that big old dislike button down there so we can get a good count. And in case you're wondering, no, nobody pissed in my Cheerios. Like, there was not a single YouTube comment that I'm specifically talking about right now. It's just that I see a lot of this stuff all over the internet. It's in the comment sections of YouTube videos. It's on forums. It's below articles that have been written by very knowledgeable people. It's a prevalent thing that is very unfortunate, and it does not necessarily represent what this community is about. And I just feel like I had to say something about it. So please, don't fall into that trap. Nobody likes a snob. Anyway guys, I hope you did find this video useful and enjoyable, and if you did, please don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. If you want to support this channel, there's a variety of different ways to do that. One of the best ways is to purchase a t-shirt from the merchandise store that is down below the description box. You can get this t-shirt here, as well as many others like it. If you happen to be in the market for some new homebrewing equipment, please check out my Amazon store, which is linked in the description, where every single item on that store is something that I personally vouch for, so you can buy with confidence. And last, of course, if you want to support the channel on a more personal basis, please check out my Patreon, which is also linked in the description. Thank you very much to the Patreon supporters that I have right now. You guys are amazing and have been doing some pretty incredible things for this channel, and you really do have my deepest thanks. Anyway, thank you for watching all the way to the end. You guys are my true fans, and I do appreciate it. So until the next one, cheers.